of unity. And when we pray together, you will see mountains moved out of our pathway and you'll see victories and, and, and miracles like the Shiloh Village that we are doing and God is bringing to fruition. Next week we're going to start on which house that would be? The third or fourth? Elder Ricky's house would be the third house that we have started on in the last two months. Yes. Amen. And we're going to finish it. We're going to finish it in two weeks. Praise God. And then we're going to start on the next one. And praise God. How are we doing this? Because we are together in the spirit of unity. And the spirit of unity, we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. So we got to understand, church, that we are a people of God. And God said blessings would overtake us. But we've got to stay under the blood covering. And don't let nobody talk you or try to lead you into leaving, leaving away from true light. If God brought you here, he brought you here for a reason. I don't care how strong that personality is. Rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Stay in the church God brought you into. And you'll have blessings and miracles manifested to you if you learn how to stay in the true church. And God never did have churches. He had one church. Is that right? When he's coming back, he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. So we've got to understand, church, we've got to stay in the true church. Let's go back to Hebrews. I'm going to bring this out again. Let's jump into chapter 10, verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared me. God prepared the body for himself and became the Son of God. Now, pick up in uh, verse 6. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Why would somebody want to take part in a so-called Passover festival when Jesus said, In burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin, thou hast no pleasure. Uh-huh. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. This is the sacrificial lamb, the Christ. Uh huh. Above when he says, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not, neither has pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. That was under the law. Amen. That is under the New, New, New Testament covenant. Yeah. Back over to chapter 8, and let's, let's quickly bring in a verse 12 and 13. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. That's once you get converted, whatever you've done in your past life, y'all hear me? Yes, you could have killed 99 people. But once you get baptized in Jesus' name, God has forgiven you. And that sin is gone. Yes. Verse 13. In that he said, a new covenant he had made the first old. Now you can't take part in the Passover festival because he says here and then he said a new covenant he had made the first old now that which the cat and white old is ready to vanish away the Old Testament covenant is gone what we do we take part in uh, the recognition of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ by the cracker unleavened cracker or bread and the grape juice. We don't drink wine. We drink grape juice. Now, a lot of people are confused. Well, Jesus drank wine. Jesus never drank no fermented wine. That's another lie that secular Christianity tells. You had two wines in that day. You had fermented and unfermented. Fermented is an intoxicant. A stimulant. Jesus ain't never drunk no intoxicant beverage. and never told you to. That's why he said a drunkard should not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Matter of fact, he said strong drink is a reproach. So we drank for uh, our communion, we drank grape juice. Grape juice is the unfermented wine, which was called uh, old wine. The new wine was the fermented kind. First discovered by who? Noah. 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 By accident, probably. But he let that grape juice uh, get a little too old. And took a swallow, and 
and late. Uh, Amen. Amen. And got drunk. Amen. And the son saw his nakedness or saw his shame. Yeah. Praise God. Now keep in mind, the Bible says a drunkard shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. I don't know where Noah is today. Maybe he found space for repentance. Maybe he did. But I know what the Bible said. A drunkard shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's Bible. All right, so I'm, I'm trying to show you, brothers and sisters. We've got to understand Scripture as it is rightly taught. There is no such thing as celebrating a day of Pentecost, a day of Passover, a day of uh, what's the, uh, Hanukkah. You, you don't have to celebrate that. That was under the old law. We got a new covenant now. And the new covenant was settled at Calvary when Jesus Christ died and shed his blood. Amen. That introduced now a new covenant. And the old covenant is gone. Candle burning. You go to the Roman Catholic Church, they got statues. Uh, get me uh, Exodus 20, and I'll be around verse 5. You go to the Catholic Church, they got candle burning. You can burn a candle for whatever saint <coughs> that you want, and you don't have no Bible for it. Why do they do it? They do it because they are misguided. I'm here to guide you in the right way. Amen. Teach you the truth. Exodus 20 chapter. Verse 4. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not means you can't do it. Make unto thee any graven image. Uh huh. Or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Now, you look around here. You will never see a picture of of so-called Jesus. That's right. Because Jesus is God manifest yes. in the flesh. Yes. Now the Bible says, Thou shalt not make it be any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven. <coughs> any likeness. Of course, they had no photographs in, but they had drawings. Yes. You can't even have a drawing of the Last Supper. Because yes. it's against the Word of God. Yes. Where does all this mess come from? All of this thing comes from false religion who gives you something that they can't back up with scripture. This is why you go to churches and you won't find the dogs wearing a veil covering. First Corinthians. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I, did I finish this? All right. Uh, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is heaven. Uh -huh. Or that is in the earth beneath or that is in water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. You used to go in the Catholic Church and they bowed down before a statue. A statue is a graven image. Who are they bowing to? They used to bow to Mary until the heat got on them. They don't do that too much now. But they do it in secret. How are you going to bow to Mary? Who is Mary? She's a dead woman. She waited for the trumpet to sign. On the day of Pentecost when they went to the upper room to receive the Holy Ghost, the Bible said Mary went right along with them. How is Mary divine if she had to get the Holy Ghost the same as the apostles? Amen. And when it came time to preach, couldn't nobody preach but Peter. Amen. But Mary was there. Yes. But she couldn't open her mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Peter was the messenger from God. Hallelujah. So I'm trying to say, the Roman Catholic Church, which has pointed out the city of the Sesame, seven hills, clearly pointed out in Revelation 7 chapter. Maybe we better go to Revelation 17 chapter right now. What we get? Very critical and important chapter. Revelation 17. Jump right into verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Filthiness of her fornication, uh-huh. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mrs. <coughs> Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the earth. Here, God is warning the New Testament church about a religion that's so powerful that it transcended the generations. Yes. There has never been or ever will be a religion like the Babylonian called religion. Yes. Lipstick, earrings, Christmas, Easter, Easter egg, Christmas tree, all came from the Babylonian cult of religion that was established on a plane in the land of Shinar. Yeah. Now, get me Jeremiah. Wait, wait, wait. I want to clear this up first. Mr. Babylon, great mother of 